We put in so early Saturday morning that I think we were the very first boat at the Ingram's bait docks. There we got one scoop of uh, anchovies, real nice grade, real healthy bait. Even after 10 hours of fishing and motoring around, we only had a couple of them roll on us. From there we went over to the outside barge where they keep the cured bait for the sport boats and we made mackerel. Uh, the mackerel were pretty plentiful. We did do a little chumming for them. This was real important. You'll see later on all of our yellowtail we caught uh, trolling the mackerel. We might have been able to do it with just the anchovies, but this was really worth the time. So we made it to the Coronado Islands right as it was just starting to, to get light. Like I say, we were the first boats out there. Uh, we started by the tuna pins. Robert had a place he wanted to go to. We put the, the pair of trolling rods out. Uh, Robert likes to troll the X wraps at uh, six miles per hour. And on our very first pass through, we hook up with the yellowtail. So right away, Robert puts the boat in, uh, in neutral. And as I'm fighting the yellowtail, he goes ahead and he puts out with uh, the anchovies. Does a little chum. The idea is that the, the school will follow the, uh, that first one up and then we'll start to catch more. Uh, but as it turns out on that, that first fish, all that seemed to follow it up were uh, calico bass. So we, uh, after a couple of them, we went ahead and went back to trolling. As we were uh, boxing the area in, Robert made a hard corner and the, uh, the troll bait slowed down and kind of raised up to the top and both rods went off at the same time. And uh, that turned out to be a pair of calico bass. If for some reason you are trolling for calico, uh, that's just something to remind, keep in mind that they troll a little bit slower than the yellowtail. So after several more passes with the troll baits, we, we just weren't picking up any more fish. So we went to trolling the live mackerel that we had caught at the bait docks. Uh, now we were only going, they were nose hooked and we were going at three miles per hour. Roberts got picked up right away, but as soon as it uh, loaded up, it got, his line was cut as if cut by a knife. I think it was a shark. And then moments later, mine got picked up. I was expecting it to be a shark as well. And it was acting real funny. It would kind of kind of grab the bait and then drop it. I would go to engage the reel and it would drop it and I would let it go out again. Finally it got going enough that I was able to engage the reel and get the uh, circle hook set. Even then though, the, it was acting funny. It just didn't take off. It was, uh, you know how a shark will just kind of lay around out there, use its weight. Uh, it allowed me eventually to lead it right, just crank it right on up to the uh, to the boat. Only about the time we saw it and it saw us did we realize it was yellowtail and it made a a run for the bottom. We were in about 70 feet of water and uh, it was going to get in the rocks below. Uh, I was using a uh, a star drag. I really like a star drag for this because it was easy for me to use my 65 pound braid to a 40 pound leader and just crank it down, stop him from getting to the bottom. And then when it came back up, I was able to back off because they'll often make those big runs at the, at the boat. And that's how we put the second fish on board. From here on, it seemed like we would um, we just caught one yellowtail right after another. What we were doing was, and I don't have a real good, I don't have it on film real good, I can't really show it, but Robert was real good about taking a scoop of about a half a dozen of the, um, the anchovies and going ahead and chumming with them when we had a fish up close. Um, we always had, while one person was fighting, the other person would make sure that they got a mackerel back in the water 
so that it was out and it was in the zone so that if the school was staying with us as it seems like it seemed like they were staying with us and we were keeping them between the uh the live anchovies that we were throwing to them and always having one mackerel back plus a, plus the one that we had hooked under the boat when all that got going and we kept that rhythm going we never stopped that kept the school with us, and we just caught one fish right after the other, right up until we, uh, we had our limit, and we were ready to head on offshore. Okay, I've trimmed this film down to about a minute of fish, just the action scenes, because as you all know, it takes, it takes a while to bring in these, this size yellowtail. Uh, so while we're watching the fish be caught, I'm going to talk to you about line. I like the round reel. Robert likes the low profile. We both were using star drags. I'm a braid guy. I use a 65 pound braid with the 40 pound uh, fluorocarbon. Just a short piece, about 10 feet. Robert is a mono guy. He always puts on fresh mono. He's got 40 pound. I really didn't see a difference in the catch rate. It seemed like they were picking up either one just as well. Uh, later when we went offshore, I didn't notice, and I'll talk to, talk about that later. But, but for what we were doing right here in the islands, it didn't really seem to matter. The fish were just hot to bite. We were both using number two circle hooks, uh, ring circle hooks. We caught some in the in the center of the uh, in the corner of the, the jaw, but we caught a lot in the roof of the, the mouth too. We didn't pull a lot as long as we let the fish go go away from us. That's all that really mattered. Uh, I even foul hooked one in gill. That's only the second yellowtail I've ever been seen. I've ever seen that got foul hooked by a circle hook. As far as rods go, we're both using eight foot heavy rods. This is important because you'll see where one will go under and the other will go over and we have to work our way around the, uh, the engine and around the boat. That length is important to be able to get the, uh, the strength out to the tip. I have 10 line guides on the PCH custom rod I'm using. That stands for uh, Pacific Coast Highway. Uh, I like the uh, shrink wrap handles, uh, good rods.
Okay, as we uh, as we finish the inshore portion of this video with the tenth fish, one more time we did catch all of our yellowtail on the the big bait that we caught, but I really believe that the uh, the anchovies were key to chumming and to keeping them in there. Also, we made sure that we we always had a a fresh bait going back before we we pulled up, uh, we gaffed the fish that we had under the boat. And now we're gonna head offshore. On our second paddy stop in real blue water, if you look up in the right hand corner of the frame, you'll see my fish is jumping out of the water right there. Um, that sound that you're about to hear is, the, uh, is my GoPro battery going out. So I don't have a lot of film here, but I will go ahead and I'll talk to you about what happened. Okay, so we pulled up to a patty, and it was a long patty. I want to say it had a bird on it, but I'm not sure. It had bait on it. No fish came out to greet us. Uh, but right away, again, we started throwing the cut bait out, and we threw some live anchovies. And I hooked up, I grabbed the metalloid reel, this is a lever drag. I have it strung up with 50 pound braid to about 10, uh, 10 feet of uh, 20 pound fluorocarbon. And because of the, the smaller size of the anchovies, we're using a number two ringed hook. I found that when I was nose hooking them, they, I wasn't getting much action out of them. So I started butt hooking them and, and that did the trick. They, they got real frantic. And because of the, the angle that you have them hooked, they also dove down quite a bit. So my, uh, my Dorado, the first one that we hooked when we went offshore, just picked that right up and just went crazy. Um, Robert was using the 40 pound mono and it chose the 20 over the 40. Uh, he was also using a big mackerel though. So there might've been something about the bait size. Still, you can't go wrong going down a size in line, except as would turn out, it's blue water, I wasn't worried. It hadn't taken nearly even half a spool on, on, its, on its great runs. It would get sideways and I couldn't really horse it in, but again, it's blue water, so I really wasn't worried about it. Um, I wanted to go ahead and take my time bringing it in, hopefully bring others in with it, maybe keep it on the hook until Robert could hook one. What did happen though was it found another piece of floating kelp and it got a wrap on it and it, and it took, a, took the line 90 degrees to my reel which magnified the, um, the break and so I, really I lost all advantage that I did over, over my drags and it was able to, uh, to get a good hard pull on the hook and it pulled the hook. Uh, that's a problem with small hooks. That's a problem with small baits. Uh, the, the line never failed. My drags were good. It just sometimes circumstances happen that way. And now we'll go on to we'll talk about how uh, Robert went on to, uh, to save the day for us. So we pulled up on a patty and, and I knew it would have a fish on it. It had a couple birds on it and it just had that look like it had been out there forever. Robert throws a, uh, a nose hooked Ready? mackerel, the same kind that we'd been catching the yellowtail on. And just moments later, we see a fish break on the top. And even before I could get a line in the water, he was hooked up and his fish, it was a bull. And it was jumping out of the water. I, I've got a couple pictures there. If you look in the frame, it did a lot of it off to the side. Robert's got the 40 pound and he's bent over and he's just, He's working the fish, and I've, I've fished a lot with Robert. And he's a real badass, but by the time he got that fish in, that fish had, had worked him, and, and Robert was showing a little wear and tear. Uh, it was it was such beautiful colors. I don't have to tell you who have seen it. When they're in the water, they just got these neon colors, and all their fins are lit up like they're like they're from an, another world. Um, or it took a, ball, a lot for him to lift the fish up. It, it weighed out, we figured, about 35 pounds. I hear that, Personally, man. I think it weighed more than that, but, but 
Robert knows better than me. Um, it was just a, a great trip. And this is John Poplock saying goodbye. <laughs>